It's November 6th, 1860. The U.S. is having an election. The South and the Democratic Party really don't want this guy named Abraham Lincoln to win. So, between the two groups, they decide to run three opposition candidates, which surely wouldn't split the vote and backfire, right? Right? So the first state to act was South Carolina. The first action by the state legislature was to declare Lincoln's election a hostile act. Okay then. Then their senators resigned their seats and the legislature called for a convention of local representatives within the state to consider secession. And they also authorized the raising of a militia for the state's defense. About a month later, the South Carolina Secession Convention opened in the capital, Columbia. And with that, the convention voted 169 to nothing to leave the Union. And from this, they wrote an ordinance to dissolve the Union between the state of South Carolina and other states. And in order to do this, they figured that if the Constitution is what allowed them to join the country, then and them repealing their ratification of the Constitution would allow them to leave. So that is precisely what they did. The convention also created the South Carolina Declaration of Secession, where they outlined their reasons for seceding, with the main reason being northern states' hostility to slavery. Now, it is one thing to claim that you seceded from a country, but it is another to be recognized by your citizens and internationally. See, political power is about using weapons and money to get people to do things that they wouldn't do otherwise. And so, on December 27, 1860, the Confederacy's first no no going back act of secession was for South Carolina's militia to seize the federal installation at Castle Pinckney and then seize the federal arsenal, both of which were in Charleston. So Mississippi convened their secession convention and promptly voted to leave the Union. And that same day, a ship attempting to resupply Fort Sumter, South Carolina, was fired upon by the militia with weapons that were obtained from the federal arsenal. This most certainly will be important later. Then Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas seceded. And then a convention of seceded states was called in Montgomery, Alabama. And the Confederate Provisional Constitution was drafted and quickly ratified by these seven states. Now, Arkansas, Tennessee, Virginia, and North Carolina still had yet to secede or join the Confederacy. Then Tennessee became the only state to hold a referendum on having a convention. Again, they didn't hold a referendum on seceding, they held a referendum on having a secession convention. And interestingly enough, 54% voted against having a secession convention. Now, on March 4th, 1861, three interesting things happened. The Virginia Secession Convention rejected secession by a vote of 89 to 45. President Abraham Lincoln was inaugurated in Washington, D.C., and the Confederacy adopted its first flag with seven stars and three bars. And the Arkansas Confession opened in Little Rock. Next, on March 11, 1861, the permanent Confederate Constitution was adopted, as they had made a provisional one, but they had a permanent one now that they had more time. Now, the Confederate Constitution was pretty much the same as the Union Constitution. However, they wrote explicit protection of slavery. Alabama then became the first state to ratify the Confederate Constitution. Then by April 12, 1861, every seceded state except for Florida ratified the Confederate Constitution. Now on April 12, 1861, Fort Sumter was then fired upon by Confederate troops and they forced a surrender and then took the fort for themselves. Now this ended up playing a major role in the remaining states seceding as the next day Virginia called for a second secession convention. And on April 15th, Lincoln called for Union states that hadn't yet seceded to send a militia to stop the insurrection. And this caused sentiment in undecided southern states to move towards secession, as they didn't want to send a militia to fight against southerners. Then Virginia's second secession convention approved secession by a vote of 88 to 55. I don't know how they gained nine delegates, but then the Arkansas Convention reconvened and voted for secession by a vote of 69 to 1. No. Virginia and Arkansas were then admitted to the Confederacy as the 8th and 9th states. Then the state of North Carolina, realizing that at this point, given that they were surrounded and had no choice, held a secession convention, voted to secede, and was promptly admitted into the Confederacy as the 10th state. Then Tennessee held their second referendum on secession, and this time around
round, they voted 69.6% in favor of seceding. Uh. And finally, on July 2nd, 1861, Tennessee was admitted into the Confederacy as the final state. So now that the Confederacy was together, now they needed international recognition. But no country ever formally recognized the Confederacy or ever established diplomatic relations. One was because of the war, and two, because they didn't want to look like they were supporting slavery. Because slavery bad, freedom good. And then the Civil War happened, the Confederacy lost, and then Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, along with members of his cabinet, officially dissolved the Confederacy on May 5th, 1865. And yeah, so that's how they did it, and that's how they lost. Ha! Got it! Thanks for watching, and remember to never stop learning.